Van Eyck is celebrated for pioneering true-to-life realism in art, evident in both his detailed portraits and breathtaking landscapes that seem to stretch endlessly. His technique in paintings like Saint Francis of Assisi receiving the stigmata predates Leonardo da Vinci's realistic landscapes by over half a century and foresees the emergence of the Baroque Dutch landscape style. In this particular work, Van Eyck masterfully blends a legendary mountainous setting with a detailed depiction of a busy Netherlandish city in the far background, showcasing his skill in fine detail painting, reminiscent of early Netherlandish book illustration and religious art. The intricate cityscape hints at Van Eyck's possible beginnings as a miniaturist, possibly as the unidentified Hand G artist in the Turin Milan hours. The painting, modest in size at 12.7 by 17.8 centimetres, captures a pivotal moment from St. Francis of Assisi's 40-day retreat at Mount Pena, where he had a vision and was marked with the stigmata, the wounds of Christ, symbolising his sanctity. In the artwork, Christ is depicted overseeing the scene, hovering above monks, Francis and Leo, recognisable in their Franciscan garb. However, the portrayal of the figures has been critiqued for anatomical inaccuracies, suggesting that these parts might have been completed by Van Eyck's assistants. Such compact artworks were often created to mark a pilgrimage or served as travel companions for personal devotion. Man in a Blue Cap This early piece by Van Eyck is a prime example of the artistic techniques that led to his fame. It features a unique three-quarters pose against a simple, dark background, a notable shift from the typical front-facing poses of that time. The painting stands out for its intense lighting, which skillfully highlights the sitter's facial features, showcasing Van Eyck's exceptional talent in rendering the textures of various fabrics. In the portrait, the subject's gaze is steady and thoughtful, giving an impression of deep contemplation as if unaware of the viewer. This effect is enhanced by Van Eyck's detailed portrayal of skin tones, including a lightly bearded face, a common feature in his early male portraits. The subject's left hand is placed on a ledge, aligning with a previously existing but now missing painted frame. His right hand is holding a ring, creating an illusion of extending out of the painting into the viewer's space. The absence of the frame, typically where Van Eyck would sign and date his work, hints that this painting could be an early work of his, though not conclusively. The sitter's large head, wearing a cerulean blue chaperon fashionable around 1430, helps date the painting to that era. Traditionally, portraits like this one had various roles, ranging from commemorating events or professions to serving as memorials. Initially believed to portray a goldsmith, this painting is now thought to represent a type of marriage proposal art common in that period. Its small size indicates it was meant to be portable, possibly taken to a prospective bride's family. The painting's intricate detail and the precise distinction in textures and lighting are signature aspects of Van Eyck's work, making it nearly impossible to imitate. His meticulous representation of life's details is thought to symbolise the divine beauty of God's creation, a prevalent theme in the Renaissance. The Ghent Altarpiece In the realm of Renaissance art, the Ghent Altarpiece is a monumental work, celebrated for both its artistic excellence and its dramatic history. This polyptych, rich in themes of redemption and salvation, is famously known as the most stolen artwork ever. The piece also tells a riveting story of its creation and the evolution of art. For nearly 400 years, the masterpiece was believed to be solely the work of Jan van Eyck. However, in 1823, a discovery questioned this attribution, uncovering a collaborative effort between Jan and Hubert, his brother. The painting bears an inscription. The painter Hubert van Eyck, greater than whom no one is to be found, began the work. Jan, the second brother, with art completed it. The Ghent altarpiece, comprising 24 panels, displays different scenes when opened or closed. 
The closed altar shows the Annunciation in a chapel adorned with symbolic elements like white lilies and a dove, representing purity and the Holy Spirit. In contrast, the open altarpiece is a vibrant and colourful portrayal of the communion of saints, highlighting the Van Eyck's skill in oil painting. The adoration of the mystic lamb, the central panel of the open altarpiece, epitomises the symbolic language of Flemish art. It depicts the Holy Trinity through a lamb, dove and halo, encompassing themes like the Eucharist and eternal life. This panel, with its Gothic cityscape, symbolises the New Testament's promise of salvation. The upper tier of the altarpiece features Christ, St. John the Baptist, and the Virgin Mary in the Jesus arrangement, flanked by a choir of angels. This tier's departure from medieval art's idealisation is evident in the angels' distinct features and emotions. The realistic portrayal of Adam and Eve marks a new direction in religious art blending human imperfection with the hope for salvation. Noah Charney, author of Stealing the Mystic Lamb, notes that the Ghent altarpiece was the first large-scale oil painting to gain international fame. Its blend of detailed realism and Byzantine iconography marked a turning point in art history. Displayed in the Louvre, it inspired a generation of French artists like Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres, the Ghent altarpiece's pivotal role in developing a new artistic medium and its significant impact on the art world argue for its place as one of history's most important paintings. Today, it stands in St. Barvo's Cathedral in Ghent, Belgium, a symbol of artistic collaborations, enduring power and the lasting appeal of Renaissance art. Man in a Red Turban Jan van Eyck holds a distinguished place in art history, particularly for his pioneering contributions to secular portraiture in Northern Europe. Traditionally, portraiture was a luxury reserved for the ruling elite, but van Eyck broke this mould, extending his talent to both aristocratic and middle-class patrons. One of van Eyck's most significant innovations was the introduction of the three-quarter view in portrait art. Previously, Religious and royal portraiture predominantly featured direct frontal representations. Van Eyck's approach, which allowed for more dynamism and depth in the portrayal of his subjects, marked a radical departure from these conventions and has since become a standard in portrait art. While Van Eyck was revolutionising portraiture in the North, the Italian Renaissance was simultaneously undergoing its own evolution in the genre. In Italy, the burgeoning humanist climate fostered a preference for profile views in secular portraits, reflecting a revival of classical antiquity styles. This contrast highlights the diverse artistic expressions that were emerging across Europe during this era. Among Van Eyck's extensive portfolio, one portrait, in particular, stands out for its craftsmanship and historical significance. This portrait, believed by many to be a self portrait, is distinguished not only by its artistic quality, but also by its unique framing and inscription. The frame mimics a gilded texture and bears the inscription Jan van Eyck made me on 20 October 1433, accompanied by his personal motto, As I Can. This motto, embodying both pride and humility, was typically associated with the aristocracy and indicates van Eyck's elevated status in society. The inclusion of his motto in only a select few of his works implies the special significance of this portrait to Van Eyck. The intimate details of the painting, combined with the use of the motto, suggest that the subject could be a close relative or Van Eyck himself. The direct gaze of the subject and the hands, out of view and presumably busy at work, further reinforce the theory that it is a self-portrait. Van Eyck's potential self-portrait epitomises a genre that has since become a hallmark for artists to express their individuality and showcase their skills. The intricate arrangement of the red chaperon in the painting stands as a testament to Van Eyck's impeccable technique, offering a clue that has led some to identify him in other works. The Arnolfini Portrait This painting is more than a simple portrait. 
it's a narrative about the social status, wealth and domestic life of its time. Every detail, from the chandelier to the mirror, is meticulously painted, providing insight into the lifestyle of the wealthy merchant class in 15th century Bruges. The Arnolfinis, depicted in the painting, were part of the emerging middle class. Despite their wealth and possessions, they were constrained by the social class they belonged to. During the medieval period, the merchant class rose to prominence due to the increase in trade and commerce, especially in Bruges. As merchants grew wealthier, their desire for social status and consumer goods increased. Commissioning a portrait from an artist like Van Eyck became a prestigious symbol of wealth. The couple in the painting are likely Giovanni di Nicolao Arnolfini and his wife Costanza Trenta, wealthy merchants dealing in fabrics and precious objects. The painting has various interpretations, such as a display of wealth, a betrothal scene, or a symbol of legal authority and character. However, it's mainly believed to be a memorial for Giovanni's deceased wife. In the 15th century, clothing was a significant indicator of culture, morals, economic status, and social power. The merchant class's wealth often challenged the aristocracy, leading to sumptuary laws that regulated clothing based on social class. Van Eyck, as a court painter, likely advised the Arnolfinis on fashion appropriate for their social ranking. Costanza's dress in the painting is notable for its green colour, volume and expensive wool material. Her fashion choices carefully navigated social norms such as avoiding too much blue, a royal colour, while showcasing wealth through the quality and colour of her clothing. The Arnolfini home was filled with luxurious items, a sign of their wealth. The furniture, although present, was more for display than function, reflecting the practices of the rich. Their bed, textiles and oriental carpets symbolised opulence and status. The detailed depiction of household items, like the chandelier and mirror, highlights Van Eyck's skill in portraying light and detail. Jan Van Eyck's The Arnolfini Portrait is rich in symbolism, deeply woven into every element of the painting. Each object, colour and figure carry a profound meaning, reflecting the beliefs, customs and social dynamics of the 15th century. The chandelier in the painting is an exquisite symbol of wealth and status. Chandeliers were rare and expensive, mostly seen in cathedrals or palaces. The inclusion of just two candles, one lit on Giovanni's side and one snuffed out on Costanza's side, is thought to represent life and death. The lit candle signifies Giovanni's life, while the extinguished candle suggests Costanza's death, aligning with the interpretation of the painting as a memorial for a deceased wife. The convex mirror at the centre of the painting is a significant element. Mirrors were regarded as cutting-edge technology in the Middle Ages, and their convex shape was the only feasible design at the time. The mirror is not only a testament to Van Eyck's skill in capturing intricate details, but also carries multiple meanings. It's seen as the all-seeing eye of God, reflecting on the spiritual and moral aspects of life. The mirror's reflection includes two additional figures, believed to be witnesses to the scene adding to the narrative depth of the painting. The small dog between the couple is a symbol often associated with loyalty and fidelity in art, reinforcing the themes of marriage and commitment in the portrait. However, considering the interpretation of the painting as a memorial, the dog could also represent the role of dogs in medieval funerary art, where they are often depicted at the feet of the deceased, signifying loyalty even in death. Costanza's green dress is not only a sign of wealth due to the expensive dyeing process, but also may symbolise fertility. The extensive use of fabric in her dress indicates wealth and status. Giovanni's attire, in rich plum and black tones, suggests wealth, and the depth of the colours indicates the extensive dyeing process, a luxury at the time. The presence of oranges in the painting symbolises wealth as they were expensive and imported fruits, affordable only by the wealthy. Each orange is meticulously painted, 
with attention to details such as shadows and reflections, emphasizing Van Eyck's mastery of light. The settle, a bench covered in rich red velvet, signifies comfort and luxury in a time when such furnishings were rare. The presence of carved gargoyles on the settle's arms is believed to ward off evil spirits. Surrounding the mirror are ten roundels depicting scenes from the Passion of Christ. These roundels suggest that the interpretation of the painting should be considered from both a Christian and spiritual perspective, as well as a legal and factual one. The placement of scenes related to Christ's death on Costanza's side of the mirror could be a subtle nod to her own passing. Jan van Eyck's signature, Jan van Eyck was here 1434, written in lavish Gothic script above the mirror, is unusual for the time. It asserts his presence in the room, both as an artist and potentially as a witness to the events depicted. The reflection in the mirror confirms this, adding another layer to the painting's narrative and emphasising Van Eyck's role not just as a painter, but as an integral part of the story he's telling. The beads in the painting are a sign of purity and virtue. Typically given as an engagement present, crystal beads symbolise the bride's purity and her duty to remain devout. This detail, while small, plays a crucial role in underlining the theme of marriage and the social expectations of women during this period. The cherry blossom tree visible outside is a subtle yet poignant symbol. It represents renewal and the fleeting nature of life, echoing the themes of mortality and the transient beauty of the world, which are central to the painting. The detailed depiction of hairstyles, such as Costanza's high plucked bro and shaved hairlini, which were fashionable at the time, adds another layer to the portrayal of the characters. It reflects the societal norms and beauty standards of the era, further immersing the viewer in the historical context of the painting. The Virgin in a Church In the realm of Northern Renaissance art, Jan van Eyck stands as a masterful storyteller whose canvases merge lifelike portrayals with profound symbolism. This painting, often referred to as The Virgin in a Church, provides a fascinating glimpse into this blend of realism and metaphor. Believed to be the left wing of a once stolen diptych, this panel showcases the virgin and child in a setting that is as symbolically rich as it is visually stunning. The central figures in this work, the virgin and child, are portrayed with a divine magnificence. The Madonna, depicted as the Queen of Heaven, is adorned with a regal, jewel-studded crown and dressed in royal finery. Her red dress, symbolizing Christ's future sacrifice, is cloaked in a dark blue robe edged with golden embroidery. This portrayal draws a parallel with the Byzantine tradition of the Eleusa icon, depicting a tender and maternal virgin. Van Eyck's penchant for high realism is well noted among art historians. However, the realism in Van Eyck's paintings, especially the church interiors, often masks a deeper symbolic narrative. Van Eyck didn't merely replicate reality, instead, he reimagined it to convey spiritual truths. The church setting in The Virgin in a Church, for example, is not a real location, but a carefully constructed symbolic space. This approach is evident in the details of the painting, such as the life scenes of the Virgin on the choir screen and the angels singing from a hymn book all contributing to a larger symbolic narrative. One striking aspect of the Virgin in a church is the disproportionate scale of the Virgin and Child compared to their surroundings. This deliberate distortion emphasises the spiritual significance of the figures, elevating them above the physical confines of the setting. Furthermore, the direction of light in the painting defies natural laws as it streams in from the north instead of the east. It could be interpreted as a symbol of Mary being a source of spiritual light, transcending the mundane world. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Your support helps me continue creating more content like this. Thank you.